Hello and welcome back to another video. In this problem, we're asked to evaluate the limit and justify each step by indicating the appropriate properties of limits. We have the limit as x approaches infinity of 2x squared minus 7 over 5x squared plus x minus 3. The quick way to solve this is to say, okay, if we have x going off to infinity, the only terms that are going to matter are the terms with the largest degree, right? Where if you're taking, quote unquote, plugging in infinity, 2 times infinity squared, right, you can think of that as infinity, this minus 7 isn't going to do anything, right? The largest term is the only one that matters, so we can say that this is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of 2x squared over 5x squared, and this simplifies to the limit as x approaches infinity of 2 fifths, which is of course 2 fifths. That's the quick way to do it, but of course we have to justify each step with appropriate properties and limits. So taking this the long way, we have the limit as x approaches infinity of 2x squared minus 7 over 5x squared plus x minus 3. First thing we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to take the limit of the numerator divided by the limit of the denominator. We can do this, and then what we're going to do is say, okay, if we have a fraction, we can multiply it, the numerator and the denominator, by the same thing and get an equivalent value of the fraction. So we can say we're going to multiply these both by 1 over x squared, which is the largest value that we have in terms of the uh, largest degree of x that we have. So we have the limit as x approaches infinity of 2x squared divided by x squared minus 7 over x squared. And we're going to do the same thing on the denominator. We have 5x squared over x squared plus x over x squared minus 3 over x squared. This is a sum and difference in the numerator and the denominator. So we can split the terms with individual limits. So we have the limit as x approaches infinity of 2x squared over x squared minus the limit as x approaches infinity of 7 over x squared. This is divided by the limit as x approaches infinity of 5x squared over x squared plus the limit as x approaches infinity of x over x squared minus the limit as x approaches infinity of 3 over x squared. What we have to do here now is say, okay, this is something that can be cancelled. So we just have the limit as x approaches infinity of 2, right, which is just 2, minus, point out the 7, 7 times the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x squared. Similar thing here, the x squareds cancel, and we just have the limit as x approaches infinity of 5, which is, of course, just 5 x and x squared here cancel. We can divide x from each the numerator and the denominator, so this just becomes a 1, and x squared becomes x. So this is plus the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x, and then minus uh, pulling out a 3, 3 times the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x squared. Why have I written this in terms of this? Well, these two are obvious, but why have I turned it into these? Well, if we have the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x to the r, this is equal to 0 for any r greater than 1. So we have 1, or sorry, greater than or equal to 1. We have r is equal to 1, we have r is equal to 2, we have r is equal to 2 for all of these individual examples. So this is equal to 2 minus 7 times 0 divided by 5 plus 0 minus 3 times 0. This is basically just a lot of terms that are equal to 0, which leads us to just 2 divided by 5. And this is the uh, 
rationed out way of just saying, okay, the only thing that matters is the x squared, because when we do it this way, the x squared terms, the two and the five, are the only things left that don't turn to zero. But either way, we find that the limit is equal to two fifths.